Hey everybody, George Fennell, Steel Show Technologies, Weapon Shield, here today for um, another demonstration. And I just want to say the response that we're getting from these is kind of overwhelming. We, uh, uh, we set out to do one thing and that was uh, to compare the standard, the military standard break-free CLP with Weapon Shield and show you the dramatic difference. And we just kind of threw in the Hoppies Elite, you know, for kind of fun. It's just to say, you know, here's another one that we can show you in that instance. Our intention was not to go into this endless testing that everyone uh, would like to see. But, I mean, I do understand because when I did this years and years ago when we had FP10, um, and I used a more quantitative machine by Dr. Michalopoulos at the Butler County Community College. It, he had built one with transducers and they gave us very, very accurate readings. Um, it's very interesting to see the differences and the capacities that a lot of these fluids either have or lack. So, and everybody out there who's got their favorite fluid that they're using, uh, you know, whether it be Mobile One or 20W50, and, and let me tell you something right now. If you look at your automotive oils, those of you who are using them, and you're using them with some degree of success. And that, that's almost under ideal conditions, and oil is oil to a certain degree. But automotive oils are made to have a certain amount of wear. They're made with a specification that invokes uh, planned ob obsolescence. Uh, being a member of SAE for years myself, uh, and knowing basically how these specifications are written, they're minimal at best. So uh, it's not what you think. It's, you know, you think these oils have all type of additives and protectives. They have a lot of additives, but they're anti-foamers. They're poor point depressants. They're uh, viscosity improvers. They're flow reagents. Everything that works with your engine to make that oil more acceptable and to give it a certain lifetime before it breaks down. And to use it on your firearm, there are no extreme pressure reagents in that oil. And you need that in a firearm. That's why a lot of these are failing. You don't have really any extreme pressure additives that are in there uh, that, that will protect against the very high boundary conditions uh, that are invoked, you know, in operation. And when, you know, firearms, especially semi-automatic and fully automatic firearms, are going through an enormous amount of pressure, enormous amount of heat, and even so that the tolerances will change and they'll become tighter as the heat gets, you know, starts to increase more and more. So you need these type of boundary lubricants in there to get what we call malfunction-free operation. And most of our shooters, I mean, you can go to our page, go to Weapon Shield, go to my page, George Fennell on uh, Facebook. Look at all our sponsored shooters, even on WeaponShield.com. Ask any of them. They will tell you that they have always had a malfunction or another here or there, and sometimes some real headaches, but when they started using Weapon Shield, all the malfunctions went away. And that's our MO. Um, it, that high, imparting that high of lubricity to the system and then to your gun. And the big benefit is it eliminates wear. So the surface life of your gun is being increased exponentially because we're stopping the wear process virtually in its tracks. You're not getting any wear. Uh, everybody says, well, it's a great lube. What about its performance as uh, an anti-corrosive and as a cleaner? Well, we've showed you in the videos how it cleans, and it'll clean very well. We will do a series of videos, and I had planned on this, to show you the anti-corrosive value of the oil itself. Um, and we'll compare it to other oils that we're doing here that claim to be CLPs. But once again, I don't want to get into testing everything, uh, you know, basically, let me, for example, slipstream. People have said, oh, I'd like to see how that works. Slipstream, it's just a, it's a base oil but it has molybdenum disulfide in it. If you're using this, you know there's a ball bearing in there. You also know that if it sits for a while, you see a very thick gray substance at the bottom and it tells you that you've got to shake this up and the more it mixes, the better it will perform. Really, it won't do any better than about three or four pounds on here, which is not condemning it, but it's not saying that it's nothing special. It doesn't have any extreme pressure additives. But the thing is, that's a solid, molybdenum disulfide. What that solid does under pressure and under heat 
it will change and convert to molybdenum trisulfide, which is a corrosive, or, or excuse me, it's an abrasive. So you can take something that, you know, has a characteristics of graphite and can aid in a sliding type slip, slip stick type uh, uh, frictional setting, but it still has no extreme pressure parameters. So if you put pressure on it and everything like that, it's not going to do any good to increase those parameters and make it more of an anti-wear type thing. But this isn't a cleaner and it's not a preservative. So to be fair, as I said, and I started out, what we want to test against is the other CLPs on the market. And that, um, you know, pretty much is what, we, uh, what we're going to do. People have asked me about SLIP 2000. And this is their EWL, their Extreme Weapons Lube and lubricates, cleans, protects. That's fair. It's a good comparison to Weapon Shield. And I'm being inundated uh, with people asking about Lucas Oil. And Lucas Oil's always had a fairly good name. Um, in the racing industry, I'm very familiar with them, being that a lot of our products, and I've been in the automotive uh, aftermarket for many years. So Lucas Oil itself has been around, um, and it's, it's a good oil. Does it have the characteristics that we're looking for here? This says protect your guns and equipment with the latest in lubricating technology, and it's environmentally friendly. And um, of course, you know, you can read the verbiage uh, yourself on here. And uh, it's an all weather resistant, heat resistant, water resistant, and odorless. So it is being touted basically as a CLP, uh, a cleaner lubricant and a preservative all in one. But uh, I may be wrong. I don't see anything on here about cleaning, but but at any rate, we'll go ahead because it's such a high demand. I'll, I'll show you the lubricating uh, capacities. Keep in mind, once again, this machine is not going to condemn these oils. This machine sets a standard, and from that standard, we can compare other oils, and you can see whether those oils are better or worse. That's all. It doesn't say that that's a bad oil because it just... That's not how it works. This machine, if you run it dry, um, set it on there the weight of the arm alone, which, as I said, is about maybe five pounds on the scale. Just this weight of the arm alone will immediately start a wear pattern in a dry sense. So it's pointless to, you know, a couple of people have said, well, maybe set a standard and show us dry. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> without having wear from the get-go. Show you. This is dry. There's nothing on it. We cleaned it. We preserved it. You can hear it wearing. If I put just a little... This is what happens. Just so you can see. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take and loosen that bearing in there. I'm going to turn this bearing just a bit to the brand new spot next door. I'm going to take my stone, that which was on the bearing, the softer metal, is welded onto that stone in kind of a gold pattern. So we're going to take our sharpening stone, what I consider to be our grinding stone, and remove that metal. You can hear it. Doesn't take much. We smoothed it and bring it back to the original surface that we do this from every time. And I'll do that when we do the weapon shield as well. Um, after that we want to make sure that we get all of this carborundum and everything off. So. I'm going to wipe it off. We'll take our brake clean and spray this. And we'll wipe that again. Make sure it's spotless, non contaminated with anything. So we're ready to go again. Now, in this scenario, what we're going to do the first thing I'm going to do is take the slip. And we're going to use uh, slip stream, stream weapons lube. We'll go ahead and we'll put a drop on here. And we 
we get about three and a half pounds. That's about it. Okay. Let me set it up. You can see the wear. That is our wear mark. Now what I'm going to do once again, I'm going to take and loosen this. I'll move it next door again to another clean spot. We're going to wipe this dry, get the slipstream, or I'm sorry, the um, Slip 2000, similar names. Just had the other in my hand there. Wipe that dry. And at the same time, whoops, I'm going to wipe this off. We're going to redress the bearing again. Or the race, excuse me. Working with bearings and races all day. Clean that off. Once again, take our brake clean, make sure that's clean, get a good clean spot. As you can see, clean the surface very well. Wipe our tray off here. Turn that off. And as I showed you before, just as, as a comparison, we'll take a drop of weapon shield. I think that one's is this open. I think that's one of the flannel. We'll just, we'll open it up right here. Unscrew it, take a drop of weapon shield. Put the drop of weapon shield on there. Could have used a needle applicator, it doesn't really matter. You can hear immediately it get quiet. There's where our seizure point was. As we run down, it treats the metal more and more under the heat and under the pressure. We're down to about 15, 20, and 25. There's the bottom of the scale. That's about 1,800 pounds on a 35 to 1 basis of our fulcrum system there and using the force formula. Now, as you can see, there's our wear mark from the slip. There's a dot there, which is more like, that's what we call elastic deformation of steel. It's from the pressure. We've actually created enough pressure and enough energy and force to dent the metal there that's really not wear so at this point we're going to take again i'm going to take that ah. i want to make sure i get all the weapon shield out of here we don't want to give you the weapon shield actually will give you a false reading if you're not careful and you contaminate it it'll make a it'll make a a lesser liver gonna look pretty darn good but now we'll take that next to that weapon shield mark I'm gonna move it over again lock it down on a new spot take our brake clean spray that down real good Clean it off. Let me get a new uh, new towel here. We go through a lot of towels, believe me. Um, I'm going to do the same here now. I'm going to clean with a spot here. I'm going to clean off the raceway. Make sure I redress it. Once that's clean, take my stone, 
just make sure that everything is as smooth as it was before because what we've done in that sense by treating that surface, we applied a boundary film to this. The only way to get that boundary film off is through either a parkour or acetone and to grind that highly polished mark where the boundary film is, take that off and start again from square one. There, and I assure you, everybody that knows me out there, and there's quite a few of you that do, there are no smoke and mirrors on this. There's no deception. What you see is what you get. I could have Jack Lambert of the Pittsburgh Steelers, which we know well, come in here and pull down and do this test for you, too. That would be entertaining. <laughs> Anyhow, Jack's quite a guy. Um, it would come out the same. It doesn't matter who does the test. The test speaks for itself. And like I said, it's not, not meant to condemn anything. It is only meant to show you the differences between these lubricants and their abilities under severe conditions. And your gun goes through severe conditions. Don't let anybody tell you any different. The next one we're going to do um, is the one that I've had so many, uh, so many requests to do is Lucas Gun Oil. And this is their, I guess, their latest, newest, environmentally friendly, uh, the latest in lubricating technology. Uh, Lucas has always, you know, made a very, very fine product. Uh, and I've never had any, any problems with them whatsoever from that standpoint. So once again, not bashing, not condemning, show you what it does under these horrific conditions. There's a market for all this. You, if you're a, a user of Lucas Oil and you don't have any problems, that's fine. I, I mean, uh, you shouldn't. It's the anti-work conditions that we go for, as well as eliminating failures under the worst of conditions. So we've put a drop of Lucas on there. You can see the red it ran around there. We'll set it here. About three and a half to four there. We'll set it up. Um, and get a shot mat there. You can see our wear, wear mark. Lucas comes in, if you were to compare it to the others, as a um, you know, fairly average, fair to medium uh, in, its, in its pressure, extreme pressure rating and capability, uh, but nothing like weapon shell, as we said. Now, to do the same thing as we did before, loosen that up. Turned out to a new spot right beside the Lucas mark. I'll wipe that dry. Making sure that we get the majority of the oil off. It really doesn't matter here. I want to take this, resurface that. I don't know, Matt. Can you get a can you get a shot? Can you see the gold medal on there now? Okay, it's. Tell you what, if you can pick that up for a second and walk over here and just get to a point where I, I want to show the folks what we're talking about, where you can see on here the galling. If I move this pulley around and you can see there is a, uh, I guess you would say a track of galled or welded material that came from the ray or it came from the bearing and welded itself on here. And that's what I'm going to do. So while you're doing that, let me just show you so you can see up close what we're doing. We're resurfacing this to take off that welded material, that welded metal that's galled onto the harder steel on the raceway or the test roll. Same thing. And that gets it pretty much. Sometimes it gets pretty... We get to a point where we eventually have to replace this ring because we have ground it so much and it becomes very thin. I've had one break at one point, but we have them sitting here so that we can actually go ahead and replace them if we need them, or if we need to. And now once again, just 
more solvent just to make sure that that's clean. And we're starting over again from the same point of reference that we do every test. Now this time, once again, we showed you the Lucas. Now we're just going to take, once again, take a drop of weapon shield. Open it up first. There we go. And there seems to be our standard of weight right around there. Taking double that, let's take it down to 10 pounds once again. There's 15, 20, 25. Now the other thing, I think I showed you this the other day. Let me put this up first so that Matt can get a shot. Again, you can see there's our Lucas mark and then a the little dot there. You know, we've lost um, we've lost lost a fair amount of metal, but even under spectra analysis, which I've done uh, Fourier transmission or FTIR infrared spectra analysis on most of these products. Mo almost all of these don't have any extreme pressure agents. We're going to get to some that have extreme pressure agents in them, but we're going to show you in, in, uh, by comparison why they're different and why they can be detrimental, uh, especially in the corrosive area. So once again, without, I'm going to show you, I should do this before in the first one. I'm going to wipe it dry. I'm not going to use solvent, but just wipe the excess oil off so that there's really no excess. And this just demonstrates the effectiveness of the boundary film that we formed. Right there is where everything else is failing. As a dry lubricant, we're still functioning. But it's not dry. There's a boundary film that's about six microns thick there, and it will continue to function under a vapor phase type of lubrication. It'll fail if I get it down far enough. But at any rate, that was 10 pounds. Let me show you if there's a mark on there. Nope. Good as gold. So there you have it. Um, I'm going to leave that for today. It's the weekend. Hope everybody has a good weekend. We're going to get out and try and enjoy one here too. But um, feel free. Uh, visit us once again at www.weaponshield.com. Our source of suppliers are on there under the order button. There's also a state, uh, statewide list that's on there of dealers that you can check. Um, number one, uh, you can order from us if you have a problem. I urge you, though, to use our distribution network. Also, I think it needs updated on there. Um, Amazon.com carries our products, uh, as well as Midway Brownells, um, Sportsman's Guide, Rocky Mountain Rubicon, San Diego Surplus Supply, Blitzkrieg Tactical, the list goes on. Go check it out and see for yourself. Have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you next week. George Funnel, Steel Shield Technologies, Weapon Shield.